A Gospel reading from the 10th chapter of Matthew. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Bezlebu, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the rooftops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in heaven. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs on your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword, For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will will lose it, and those who lost their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Norm Siegman, and I'm the chair of Oringa Hope. And Oringa Hope is an organization that is in Oringa, Tanzania, to provide help to people that are in our members of Oringa Hope. And largely, these are uh, smallholder farmers, some people in business. We provide microfinance loans and agricultural marketing support. And so this morning, I'd like to share a little bit of information with you about the organization and about the good things that are being done and how it's really benefiting our members there. Well, first of all, to start off, we should start with the way congregations start their services in Tanzania. And they start off by saying, Buana Asafiwe. In Swahili, that's praise the Lord. So if you will join me, Buana Asafiwe. So this morning, the gospel uh, for the day is Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 to 39. I'd like to focus on verses 29 to 31. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet, Not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered, so don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. These are certainly comforting verses for all of us. We're all important to God. God thinks of us as individual human beings created by him. We don't have to fear, knowing that God knows about us, cares about us, and has a plan for what happens to us in our daily lives. If God values something as little as sparrows, we can be confident of how much God values us. This should be of great comfort to us and to all the people who are members of Oringa Hope in Tanzania. The members that Oringa Hope serves in Tanzania, in the Oringa region, are some of the poorest 
individuals on Earth. Oringa Hope is focused on providing members with the capability to increase their incomes to lift themselves out of poverty. It's reassuring to know that God is aware of all the people, whether they're living here in Forest Lake or in the rural areas of Oringa. I'm going to speak today about how Oringa Hope is lifting people out of poverty through access to credit in microfinance loans and through agricultural marketing services. It is dedicated to helping people help themselves. Now, I know that Faith Lutheran has got a long history of service to the folks in Tanzania, starting with Pastor Don Foltz, who originally helped to form the partnerships between congregations in the St. Paul area synod and the parishes in the Oringa region of Tanzania, in the Oringa diocese. But for those of you who might not be familiar with the geography, so Tanzania is located just south of the equator um, and in East Africa, adjoining the Indian Ocean. And Oringa is located about 300 miles west of Dar es Salaam. When you fly into Oringa, to Tanzania, you land at Dar es Salaam. It's a 300-mile drive on a two-lane highway and takes about nine hours without any stops. And the Oringa Diocese is shown in this slide. And these are the locations of many of the parishes in the Oringa Diocese. Many of those are where we have the cooperatives of Oringa Hope. should also talk a little bit about Bega Kwa Bega. Bega Kwa Bega is the partnership between congregations in the um, St. Paul area synod and parishes in the Oringa Diocese. And Oringa Hope is one of the affiliate partners included as part of the Bega Kwa Bega organization. And included in those affiliates are, are organizations like the St. Paul Partners, which drill wells and provide water systems, provide clean water to people. Or Shoulder to Shoulder, which is the organization that supports the Alula Hospital and the Alula Nursing School, or the Radio Faraha, which broadcasts to thousands of people the messages of Christ and also messages to the agricultural um, members of the Oringa Hope Organization. So, what are the causes of poverty? As I said, most of the members of Oringa Hope are smallholder farmers, farming two to four acres. And what are the causes of poverty? Well, first of all, it's lack of knowledge of how to use hybrid seed and fertilizer. And Oringa Hope has answers for each of these areas of causes of poverty. For example, we have an agronomist, and we have people that are regularly training our members in the best practices of farming. It's access to hybrid seeds and fertilizer. Previously and traditionally, um, people would buy fertilizer and hybrid seed from a dealer. They might have to carry a bag of fertilizer one at a time back to their farm. Um, the dealer might not have the products they wanted or they might not have them on time, and they really didn't trust the dealers to provide quality products. Access to credit. If you don't have money to purchase, what are you going to do? And so Oringa Hope provides microfinance loans to its members. Pre- and post-harvest losses. In, in this area, south of the equator, sir, storing grain in the traditional methods at the farm place Farmers might lose up to 45% of the grain due to insect damage and to rot. And lack of farm mechanization today in Tanzania, most of the smallholder farmers are doing everything by hand, including turning over the soil.
A typical farmer owns two to four acres. This is a small area. Because everything is done by hand, two to four acres is about the maximum that a family can farm. They make about $320 a year using traditional farming methods with a microfinance loan of about $320. They can purchase hybrid seed and fertilizer. They can triple their yield and they can make $960 a year. And for that area, that is what might be considered to be lower middle class. It makes a huge difference as far as moving from a subsistence farming to being able to send their children to school, being able to afford better medical care, being able to afford better nutrition. What does that look like? Well, the slide on the left shows what a field might look like if a farmer used no fertilizer and you'd see leftover from last year's crop, which might give them about 50% germination rate. And the slide on the right is a farm that, a field that the farmer used the recommended amount of fertilizer, used hybrid seed, and instead of a subsistence living of maybe $300 a year or less than a dollar a day for a family, a family will earn $900 to $1,200. A huge difference in, in what a family can do. Then, what are, the organ what are the organizations that Eringa Hope has? Well, there's two sets of cooperatives. There's the uh, Savings and Credit Cooperative Societies. We call them SACOs. And with that, Eringa Hope is providing microfinance loans of maybe $300, $320 a year. And we have had a repayment rate, historically, of 95% repayment on time. And why is that? Well, it's because um, it requires members to have one-third of the amount of the loan in savings. It requires three cosigners. requires some amount of collateral. And most SACOs, microfinance organizations in Tanzania, have a failure rate of almost 50%. Oringa Hope has had a very successful rate over the 13 years it's been in existence. The other half of the organization is Agricultural Marketing and Cooperative Societies, or AMCOs. So the AMCOs will aggregate and purchase input supplies like fertilizer, seed, and sprays, will contract with directly with suppliers, will bring the fertilizer and seed out to the central location in the village so farmers can pick up all their supplies directly. We also aggregate, store, market, and sell crops at a storage location. Uh, the top slot, top photo is a what we call an integrated uh, development center, and it has offices for the AMCOs and the SACOs, a conference room, and some storage area where members can store their grain the bottom slide is a market center that has recently been constructed to do centralized storing of farmers' uh, crops. Another program is a delayed sale and storage program. Traditionally, farmers needed money at harvest time. They'd be running out of money. They needed money to send their kids to school, to pay off debts, and they felt like they had to sell their crops at harvest time when prices are the lowest during the year. So we have put a program in place so that farmers can bring their crops into our storage locations. They can get a loan of 60% of the value of their crops, which means that they don't have to sell exactly at harvest time. They can afford to store their crops for four to six months and, and get prices that are 40 to 60% higher than they would have been at market time. So you put all of these, these uh, capabilities together of being able to get microfinance loans, being able to store their crops, not having to sell their crops to a, a, a middleman who comes to the village and buys a couple bags at a time at 15 to 20% less than the market price. 
we can we can help members increase their incomes by as much as a factor of five, which is making a huge difference in people's lives. And this is what the organization of Oringa Hope looks like. So on the bottom you see SACOs, and each one of those cooperatives are in a village. They are self-managed. They, ha- they elect their own leaders. They elect their own boards of directors, and they decide how to run their own microfinance loaning to make sure they qualify their own members. And then there's a joint SACOS, which oversees all of those SACOS locations, provides oversight, and they have their own elected leaders and elected board of directors. And the same then for the uh, the AMCOs. Then the Microfinance Institute, which is the box on the top, they provide oversight to all of the um, SACOS and AMCOS organizations. Uh, They have a professional staff in place that are supporting the cooperatives. They provide oversight of those cooperatives and training and education. We have joint training where all the leaders come into the University of Oringa, where where our main offices are located. And so you train all the leaders all at one time. Then we also provide training and education out in the villages. And that training and education is for for microfinance loans, for the SACOS organizations, how do you keep books? How do you manage all the financial education that you require? Um, and then for on the agricultural side, we have an agronomist who comes out to the villages, make sure that people are understanding how they can use best farming practices to be more successful and increase their incomes. And we talked about labor. The typical farm is two to four acres, and that's because most of the labor is done by hand. The two photos on the left are photos of people turning their soil over, and they're doing it by hand with a broad hoe. Extremely time-consuming. As we see that members are increasing their farm incomes, they are able to rent more land, purchase more land, they can afford to pay for contract plowing, either with a oxen or with a tractor. So we're seeing that constant development, and Oringa Hope is instrumental in, in overseeing that kind of progress. Oringa Hope was formed in 2000, started off with two SACOS locations, and since then it has grown to 39 SACOS locations, cooperatives, serving 2,900 members, 27 AMCOS locations serving 1,600 members. A lot of times the members are members of both of those uh, organizations, so a total of about 3,200 members. And when we consider all the family members that are really benefiting from Moringa Hope, it's about 23,000 members. And all in told, we're seeing tremendous improvements that are taking place in people's lives. And since most people tithe, the Oringa Diocese is seeing really like more like 30% increases in the giving to their congregations. And our farmers have become more profitable. They're hiring people. They're buying more things in the villages. So the whole community is benefiting. Our staff on the ground is uh, shown here in front of the building, uh, their headquarters building, which is located on the campus of the University of Oringa. And it's these folks that are implementing these programs, that are providing oversight, training, and education, and guidance. Oringa Hope is providing solutions to help lift people out of poverty by addressing the root causes of why smallholder farmers are struggling. Helping farmers increase their incomes helps families to send their kids to to school, to get better nutrition, to get better medical care, build build new homes. It's moving from a home that might have a dirt floor to a concrete floor. And I should add that Oringa Hope's growth is only limited by the amount of funds that are available for loans, 
and for purchases of input supplies that we resell then to members. If you would like to know how you could help this organization, I'd be happy to share with you what can be done to help to expand the program. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share with you what Oringa Hope is doing to lift people out of poverty in Tanzania. If you have any questions or would like to talk further, I'd be very happy to spend as much time answering questions or sharing more with you out in the uh, gathering area. So thank you very much.